I bring people into the mountains with me who are visionaries, creatives, rule breakers, free spirits, free thinkers, people with big ideas, people who have a vision, and sometimes just people who are stuck and have lost connection with their vision, but all leaders in their own right. They may be leaders in their life, they may be leaders uh, without knowing that they're leaders or they're leaders in business. I bring them, I bring you into the mountains with me so that you can literally get a different perspective on your life. I take you into a space that is quiet, that is expensive, that where there is no um, disturbance, where there is no stress, where there is no constant connection to the internet and to your phone and to email, there is nothing that can cause you stress. Now people often ask me, do I have to be really fit to come with you? And the answer is no. I'm not saying that you have to uh, have no fitness at all. That's also a no. You have to be able to walk for something like three, four hours a day at a pace that is comfortable at home. Let me re uh, rephrase this. You have, when you're at home and you go for a walk, you should be able to walk for about something like four hours, three, four hours. Because in the mountains, you walk differently. At home, you probably go at what I would call city pace. It's the pace that people maintain, that people have when they go from one appointment to the next, when they hurry to catch the, the subway or the bus or the train. It's the pace that you pretty much see everybody that's not a tourist have in a big city. Doesn't matter whether it's Amsterdam or it is London or Paris. You can immediately tell the locals from the tourists apart because the locals will be moving a lot faster than the tourists will. Now if you come with me into the mountains, what I teach you is to find your own pace. It's one of the many things that um, I teach, but that is the first one. And it's perhaps the most important one, because going through life at your own pace, going through business at your own pace, is important. You don't want to constantly compare yourself to other people. And I must admit, when I'm hiking, when I'm going into the mountains, I sometimes, of course, what time is it? It's almost seven, so of course the bells, the church bells are going to, uh, to sound. Anyway, when you go into the mountains, you have to find a pace that you can maintain for a long time. And that is a pace that is a lot slower than city pace. It's also a place where you do not want to be comparing yourself with other people. And I sometimes still, even after all these years, have difficulty doing that. When I get overtaken by people who are faster than I am, my competitive streak rears its ugly head. And I have to consciously remind myself not to try and go as fast as these people go. Because when I do, I know I will not be able to get to where I'm going. <laughs> it is um, going in the mountains is a typical case of slowing down to get where you're going faster. That sounds weird, I know, but trust me, it's true, it works. So when you want to come to the mountains with me, which of course you do, why wouldn't you want to come to something as beautiful as this? So when you want to come to the mountains with me and you want to do some training for it, basically all you have to do is start walking. Go for a walk every day, start out easily, do something like half an hour and slowly build it up and also slowly start getting used to wearing a backpack. In the beginning the backpack can be empty, you don't have to, just start, uh, to put anything in it, it's just your, your body getting used to some something additional that you're carrying and as you get 
as you train, as you walk more often and you start walking longer, you start also adding some weight to the pack. And that weight can simply be your rain gear, rain pants and a rain jacket, or a bottle of water, stuff like that. And it, it doesn't have to, it, in the end, by the time you're, you're coming to Austria, you should be able to walk for about four hours a day, just in the area where you live. And you should be able to carry a pack that weighs about something around five, six kilograms. More than that is not necessary. And it's all about getting your body used to all that movement. And one tip that I will leave you with is when you start training, when you want to do this and you need some training, be sure to not just train on level ground in the sense of nice asphalt or a nice pavement. Try and find um, ground that is not as level, that is a bit undulated, where you use many more muscle groups than you would if you were just walking on pavement. It's also, and um, I'm going to leave you with another thing. When things start hurting, slow down. Build in a rest day. Rest is as good and as important to training as uh, movement in itself is. So, when you think you need some training to come to the mountains with me, start walking every day, start building it up, and start getting used to carrying a bit of weight on your back in the backpack. That's it. That's what I did when I uh, didn't live here yet and I was still living in the Netherlands. And for those of you who know the Netherlands, the Netherlands are flat. That's why they are called the Netherlands after all. All I did was take my dog out for a walk in the morning and a walk in the afternoon. Now those were, uh, by the, those were hour long walks, an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon because I had a dog that wanted a lot of movement, needed a lot of movement. But that's what I did, that's all I did, and by the time I got to Austria to go hiking, I was fit enough to do that. Hope this helps, if you have any questions, when you have any questions regarding the physical aspect of coming into the mountains with me, let me know. And one thing you won't be hearing when we're up in the mountains is these wonderful church bells. As always, go there greatly. Bye bye.